So if you've ever gone out with your friends or family and you go to get fajitas and then you look at the menu and you're like, <gasps> when you see that price, well, why deal with that when you can have them for this price right here? That is much cheaper. Okay, so today we're making fajitas. This is commonly served at Tex-Mex restaurants. I live in Texas, I eat it all the time. Big fan of it, but it is insanely expensive for what you actually get. It's meat, vegetables, some tortillas. But at the end of the day, if you make it from home and you're conscientious of the ingredients that you use, you could have something arguably significantly better for a significantly lower price. We're doing the meat with all the accoutrements. So that means vegetables, beans, rice, tortillas, everything. And that's all for this price per person. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Wait a minute, Papa. What are the components that even make up a fajita meal? Well, my child, of course you have the meats, the classic fajita vegetables, then some dope beans, Mexican style rice, and I guess, you know, avocado or guac is optional. Oh, and cheese. Oh, and also tortillas. Always tortillas. Now let's begin with the Mexican rice. First, wash off your rice. We're using two cups of basmati rice. Submerge it in water, drain, then submerge it in water again, and drain again. This is a standard rule for any kind of steamed rice, and hopefully you know this by now. Now once that's done, get a small saucepan, and stay calm, we're not cooking the rice in here, okay? To that, you're gonna add three tablespoons of vegetable oil, heat that over medium heat. Once that's hot, add in four cloves of minced garlic. Let that cook, swirling occasionally until you get a light golden color. Then add one teaspoon of chipotle powder, one teaspoon of ground cumin, give that a swirl, and let that cook until the spices get a little toasty, about 20 seconds. Now, add your two cups of rinsed basmati rice, give that a stir, and let that lightly toast in the pan for about one minute, stirring often. Then pour all of your rice into a rice cooker base, along with eight ounces of crushed tomatoes, one and a quarter cup of chicken stock. Give that a light stir and pop it into your rice cooker. Press the on button and let it work its magic. See, it's sort of a similar process to the chicken rice. Okay, so while that's cooking, we gotta get the beans on. Start with three plump Roma tomatoes, and either under your broiler or with a kitchen torch, char those bad boys all over. I mean, really blast these brothers. Once you've blackened just the skins, let those sit for five minutes, then peel all their skins off, cut them in half, squeeze their seeds out, and give those beauties a nice dice for a good old-fashioned geese from Papa. Now get a medium sauce pot and begin heating it over medium high. Get six ounces of chorizo. Oh, real nice, Josh. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Dang, he really doing that. Squeeze it out of the casing. That looks nasty. Let that cook and sear, stirring occasionally until fully cooked and starting to get some nice browning. Next up, you're going to add one finely diced yellow onion, two medium jalapenos sliced. And if you're a little baby and you don't want it spicy, then first say, I'm a little baby. And add one green bell pepper instead. A little stinky baby, poopy bit. <laughs> Give that a stir, season to taste with salt, and let that continue to cook. And sweat for two to three minutes, stirring occasionally until the vegetables begin to soften. Then add your fire-roasted diced tomato from earlier, one and a quarter cup of chicken stock, increase the heat to medium high and bring to a boil, then immediately reduce to low and simmer for about five to eight minutes or until reduced by a quarter. Add two cans of drained pinto beans and let that continue to simmer until everything is hot. And those are Papa's beans. Let's talk about grilling meats. Grilling meat? Meat grilled? Papa's fat meat? Mm. Right, to keep the cost low, we're gonna use two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. In a small bowl, combine one tablespoon of chipotle powder, one tablespoon of ground cumin, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and one tablespoon of kosher salt. Give that some whiskey business and season all your chicky thighs on both sides generously with your seasoning. Give your thighs a light pounding, haha, <laughs> just until they're flattened so they're even in thickness all the way through. We don't need it to be paper thin, all right? Relax with the pounding. Now, ideally, you would place these in a container or a bag to cure in their seasoning overnight, obviously, in the refrigerator. Or you can use them right away, but you know, which one do you think I want you to do? Of course, overnight, maximum flavor. Now fire up a grill of some sort, and because this is a butt cheaper, you can also just use what you got. Worst case scenario, you can sear these in a cast iron pan or grill pan. Here I'm using a Japanese Conroe grill, which is traditionally used for yakitori. Always flexing. Now you're gonna want a hot side and a cool side of the grill. Lightly spray your grates or even the chicken with cooking spray. Place your thighs onto the hot side of the grill and let those bad boys get some nice grill marks and half turn if desired. See the beauty of these 
these Conroe grills is you actually get grill action all over the chicken. Now, once you have some good color and a touch of char, about three to four minutes, flip the chicken and repeat on the other side. By the time both sides are nicely colored, they should be fully cooked to an internal temperature of 165 Fahrenheit. But if not, you can just toss those on the cooler side of your grill to finish cooking from the residual heat while you grill the rest of your chicken homies. Now, as they finish, place them on a tray covering with foil to keep your juicy, moist thighs nice and hot for papa. And optionally, you can also add a nice squeeze of lime juice on top of your thighs for a very beautiful time. Okay, we have all of our good good, except our most important fajita, peppers, and onions. Guys, why am I not seeing you make this more often? It's too easy to continue saying no for any longer. You're gonna need one large sweet onion, julienne, which is just cutting the top and the bottom off, slicing it in half, and then slicing it thinly across the grain, like so to get lovely little half moons. One large red bell pepper sliced into batons, and one large green bell pepper also sliced into batons, then just heat a large skillet over medium high and add three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Once that oil is hot, hot, oh my god. Add in your veg and let that sear to get some color about one to two minutes. Season it with kosher salt, give it a good toss and continue to cook over medium high, tossing often until you get some nice caramelization and charring on the vegetables. And listen carefully, texturally they should be soft but still have a little bit of bite to them. Then turn off the heat, add three cloves of minced garlic, stir that in and place it in a bowl to the side. You can adjust the salt levels as needed. You know, I don't even know why these vegetables are so good because I feel like they shouldn't be considering the ingredients, but uh, anyway, we're almost done. Don't forget to heat up enough corn or flour tortillas for four people. I use my flour tortilla recipe, which will save you a little money and they're about 10 times better. And of course you can add guacamole or pico de gallo, but that adds extra cost. And in my opinion is fully optional, but I do really love a good avocado or guac with this, just to be honest. Now let's see if our fajita meal priced at this per serving holds a candle to the rest. Fajitas, we got the meat, we got the lime, beans, rice, vegetables, tortillas, and cheese. Now, we forgot to buy cheddar cheese, but it would cost beep, this much to have cheese for your vaginas. I had no block cheese, but what I did have was this giant wheel of Comte. Solid. Everybody says it's meat if followed by other toppings. I would disagree. Beans are something soft or something that'll squish out. You want that on the bottom. Followed by rice, your chicken, your fajita veg, and finally you're gonna hit it with your cheddar cheese. What should be cheddar cheese. And a fat little juice of lime. Hello. Fold it up, you got a taco, and then, oh. You have all this for this much per person? The chicken, assuming that you grilled it, it's got that smoky flavor. The spices are spicy. The rice is punchy, tomatoey, rich. These beans are rich, they're unctuous. There's just like a deep meatiness about them and that chorizo with a little bit of spice and then fajita vegetables. You can't go wrong with peppers and onions. Sweet, oniony, peppery, all wrapped up in a nice tortilla and for a cheap price. Now that's a fajita meal, but cheaper. Now you wanna know what else is full of hot, juicy thighs and beans b-roll All right guys, and that is it. So we made our fajitas and for a shockingly good price. And at the end of the day, it comes down to technique. That's what this series is all about. We make stuff cheap by using technique and paying attention to the flavor. You love each and little ingredient. Give it a little kiss, put a little blanket over it, tuck it in, go to bed, and then, you know, devour its entire body. We'll not talk about that. This was an appropriate but cheaper. We've got Cinco de Mayo coming up if you're watching it right now as it's being uploaded, unless you're watching it in the future. 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 Yeah, that's all I have to say. I mean, we made some pretty freaking good fajitas. And so with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe. Ah!